What's up guys, behind me is my 1974 MGB and today we're gonna to be finalizing and finishing up the custom one-off, one-of-a-kind front bumper that we built a few weeks ago. It's gonna look awesome, check it out. For the front bumper, I'm going to be uh, straightening it up. Basically what happened when I made this front bumper, I didn't realize this until just recently. My tires are leaking, like you guys know, I've said it in like the past two videos. And the passenger side tire leaks faster than the driver's side. When I was making the front bumper, the passenger side tire was flat, which means the car was tilted like this. And so I leveled everything up with the car tilted. Rookie mistake, rookie mistake. We won't make it again, but we did make it. So because of that, uh, the front bumper is okay, like as a unit, but the bar that I put across, I leveled it based on the way the car was sitting and it's, it wasn't level, the car wasn't level. So now it's it's got like a, I don't know, maybe I can tell you, one sec. This is at 2.8. So this is 1.8 degree uh, tilted up, basically, okay? Now I know that seems like a little bit, but here's the deal, and this is why precision is so important when you're making car stuff. If you get down here and you look at it, you should be able to tell, especially because of the front lip that's behind it, it gives you a really good reference. Can you guys see that? The right side is about, it's about a half inch higher up than the left. We're gonna fix that today. And we're gonna fix the headlight bucket because it's not round over here. And this one over here is really great and round and that one's not. So we're gonna deal with that. And then we may deal with our transition to the fender too. I think we'll do all of those things. I will say that if this was an issue like three builds ago, I wouldn't touch it. I'd just do it like this and it'd be cool. And if anybody got down in front of the car real low, they would be able to tell the bumper was crooked, but I wouldn't worry about it. And I say that because uh, if you're wanting to build stuff, it's not always gonna be perfect and that's okay. It's fine, just build. Building is good. We need more creative stuff happening. We need more custom cars being built. Um, and the first few times you do it, maybe the first several times you do it, it's not gonna be the best thing in the world, but it'll be your thing and that's cool. Anyway, we're going to work on this a little bit more and try to get that straight. I think I have an idea to do it. Um, and with changing kind of our method a little bit of how we're going to finish this bumper out, um, I think it's going to be a lot easier than, well, than what we've been doing this whole time. So anyway, so we're going to get back into fixing this thing. I think I can fix it without rebuilding the whole thing. I'm sure I can. I hope I can. Uh, I've got a few ideas for cutting and moving and all kinds of fun stuff to get this thing level. So that's what we're gonna shoot for today. Let's go. A little bigger. I wonder how much, I wonder if that's three eighths right there. Yeah. Yes. What do you think? Yeah. Is that three eighths? Yeah. Three yeah, eighths. three eighths. Yeah, I think it is actually. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah. So if we take three eighths off the top and then add three eighths down the bottom, we should have a, a straight looking bumper. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, you can't go into broke. My you car's not gonna break. My car, you can break. It might break? Yeah. Why? Yeah. You gonna sit out here with me? Yeah. Okay. Right. right here, is that good? Yeah. So look, see, we've gotta put, we gotta put some more fiberglass right here and we gotta take some off up here, see that? So now I've got this sheet of uh, fiberglass that I just saved from when we actually made this piece. I'm gonna cut a strip out of it, um, a little bit long, a little bit wide, I mean, and uh, then we will just lay it in right here. Yeah, and then we'll trim it. Yeah. Yeah, and then that'll fix our bumper, right? Yeah, and I'm going to my glass. Yep. And you're going to Okay, let's do it. Um, so we are going to throw this on. This is just a strip of fiberglass. You can see it's super flexible. I made it out of cloth. I'm really excited. You know, when you look at it, it looks super crooked and wonky. And um, I'm actually really excited that it's only, you know, three eighths of an inch or whatever it is. That's going to make it a lot easier to fix. Just looking at it, you would think it was a lot more. All right, I think probably something like that. You're not a stinker. It's okay. You're not a stinker. He's a stinker. stinker. You're a stinker. <laughs> Tell him. Say you're a stinker. You're a stinker. <laughs> Tell him. Say you're a stinker. You're a stinker. <laughs> hey. 
Hey, hey, look at me. You want me, you want me to tell him for you? You're a stinker! You want me to tell him for you? Yeah. You're a stinker! <laughs> You're a stinker! You're a stinker! You're a stinker! I got you, I got you. You're a stinker! You're a stinker! You don't call him a stinker. You're a stinker! You're a stinker. 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 <laughs> You're All right, come on, let's get out of here. All right, so this has been a massive, massive learning process. I already can think of a million ways to make this bumper better um, and quicker, but I want to keep working with this one. Maybe because I'm insane or stubborn. I'm not sure, but I'm going to keep working with this one. I think, uh, I think I can make it work. I'm going to try one more thing. Um, right now, the bottom half is level enough. It's close enough that you really can't see with your eyes within like a I don't know, 16th of an inch. The top is not. So the top slopes upward on this side which means that over here, you've got like a five inch bar. Over here, it's like a four inch bar, four and three eighths. And this is like five. I can't drop this. I can't just cut and drop it because for some reason with all of this, these headlight buckets are still the same height. If I drop it, this one will be noticeably higher. And I think it's just gonna look crooked again. So I'm not really sure, not really sure. I think what I'm going to end up doing though is coming in here and trimming just, just an eighth of an inch off all the way across to right here where it's supposed to cut back up, okay? So I'll do that, fill in behind it, make it good. And then I'm gonna come up here and fill up about an eighth of an inch up here. And I think with the added eighth here and the subtracted eighth here, it's going to look straight, I think. That's my plan, that's what I'm gonna go for. We're gonna do it, we're gonna see it through and if it works, cool. If it doesn't work, then we'll build a better one next time. So cutting, measuring, all that stuff. Man, my respirator is broken. And getting respirators as of late has been very difficult. So I don't know if it's like this for you, but for me, there's a point in every build of any part where I realize if I started over, I could do it. There's a there's a pecan tree above this place, so it's just naturally, it just rains pecans in the fall. Anyway, there's a point in every build where you start realizing I could do this in a much better way. And this is that point for me. Well, it's actually kind of yesterday. But I, I've had success in the past with just finishing it out and fixing it, you know, like the next time. Um, it's just kind of my process, I guess. So that's what we're gonna do. If I sound reluctant, it's because I'm having to solve a lot of problems here because I created a lot of problems for myself. But I think I've solved almost all of them, which is cool. Um, so I think what's gonna happen, so I had to drop this down because this this top part was up, which like I said, I've, I've got a million ways to do that better now. But either way, so I dropped that down. We're gonna, we're gonna fill that in and Reglass over it to make it flat. I've got to sand this down, uh, but this looks this looks good to me now, all the way across. Um, and then once we've done that and done that, we can start smoothing it out for f like final sanding. Um, I added some glass down here on the little lip thing um, that we'll have to sand down. And then I'm gonna move up to after we get that done, we'll move to the headlight bucket uh, and get it sorted. So definitely made a lot of mistakes with this one, but that's just kind of the way it goes. I'm looking forward to the next thing that I build <laughs> because I'm tired of working on this thing and uh, I have much better plans uh, for the next one. All right, let's keep going.
All right, so pretty good, actually. Check it out. So I'm using the primer just as, you know, kind of something to show me where we're at. It's not like it's ready to be painted yet. It's kind of close, but um, having it primed kind of shows you some flaws and stuff. There are some flaws that I have to deal with, uh, which I knew before priming it, obviously. It just kind of helps make them all a lot more evident. Now, there are fewer than I thought. I'm really happy with how this is looking. All these lines sharpened up a lot by using that Bondo, like this line across here and the one across the bottom. Um, so I'm really happy with that. And the lower lip looks good. Now we still got a little bit of, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but I talked earlier in the video, the whole point of like putting that other strip on here and all that stuff, all that work was uh, to kind of level out this opening on the bottom. We still got a little bit of that twist left, but it's nowhere near as bad. And like I said before, it could be a little bit of an optical illusion because this side has been hit on this car in particular. So it does look a lot better. Measurements wise, we're within like um, an eighth of an inch from this side to that side. So I'm, I'm happy with that considering everything that's happened so far. Um, and I think it looks really good. So we've really got like one more step with this before it's done, like to finalize everything. But before we do that, we have to settle uh, how this is all going to attach. Now I've done a lot of thinking about this and this is why I actually took a break from this project because um, I wanted to decide how I was gonna do that. And now I think I know. So what we're gonna do, should I tell you or just show you? I'll tell you real quick because I don't know if we'll get to all of it in this video. But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make a cut right here underneath the headlights here and there at that seam. That's gonna be one of our mounting flanges. Um, and this headlight bucket is gonna become part of the fender assembly, just like the factory. So before I was trying to figure out, you know, where I was gonna put my seam, I thought about putting it down the side of the headlight and come through the center of the headlight. And there was just no real good method to do that. And I was looking at the original design and basically this headlight bucket is built into the fender and then there's just a front skirt across the bottom. And so I'm gonna do this over fender the same way and make the headlight bucket built into the fender. And I think it's gonna work really well. I think it's gonna look good. So uh, what we gotta do to make that happen is we've got to remount this bumper and then we've got to mold it into the fenders. Let's do it. All right, that's a pretty weak looking paint job, but all I have is that guide coat. I don't actually have any black paint left, unless I put it over here. Yeah, no black paint left. So guide coat it is. I was almost out, so I just finished the can off, and I think it looks pretty good. All right, there we go. All one color, it looks really cool. I'm really excited about it. Now, if you get close to this thing and you look at it, you're gonna find some imperfections, but compared to like stuff I've done in the past, it's a lot better and I'm really happy about that. Um, so I'm gonna keep working with it. I think it's gonna be just fine. Now, you'll notice I haven't cleaned this edge up yet and it just kind of comes straight down. That's on purpose. I'm going to cut a, a nice radius on it, but I'm waiting um, to the next part of this process to do that. Also, you might be wondering, well, now what do you do? Do you just pull the whole thing off as a unit? Well, you could do that, but I am gonna make this a front bumper and then uh, two over fenders. Um, but I needed to mold all of this together uh, to be able to kind of move on to the next step. Now, you'll also notice that I did not touch the headlight buckets in this video. That's also on purpose because we're going to do those in the next step as well. Well, what is the next step? So I just got a huge order in of a bunch of fiberglass products. Now, in the middle of all this, I had a bunch of you guys sending me some information. And, and a few of you guys sent me some really informative videos about pulling molds and it's something I've looked into in the past and uh, have never really gotten into because of the 
initial cost. Like this is gonna be the cheapest way I could do it and it still cost me like $500 for just stuff. But while building this, I've kind of decided it's time to kind of move that next step into producing molds and producing parts. And so that's what we're gonna do with this project. So that is the next step. So we've made this kind of idea into something. This is, this is our thing that we've made. I'm gonna separate it into the different pieces and then we're gonna make molds. Now, for you guys that aren't familiar with the fiberglassing process, your, your typical fiberglassing process, basically, you'll lay fiberglass on top of this to make a mold. It makes a negative, um, just like a negative print, I guess, the opposite of this. Uh, and then you'll pull that off. It's a real smooth surface, or however smooth your surface is. Um, and then you will lay fiberglass into that. Now, what it does is it produces a really smooth, clean part when you pull it. It's not a bunch of parts grafted together, which is like what this is. I mean, I've got so many parts grafted in here, a lot of weak spots, so that, that could be weak spots in the future. Um, so it is all one piece, uh, which is really cool, and you lose a ton of weight. So I've told you guys in the past, now that I've finished this bumper, it probably weighs, geez, I don't know, like 20 pounds maybe, maybe 15. I don't know, it weighs a lot more than a bumper should weigh. Uh, we'll probably drop about 15 of those. I think it'll probably weigh about five pounds when it's done. Um, because it'll just be less material and less resin and all of that. So it'll be much nicer. Now, the other cool thing about that is that I can produce kits. And so what I've always wanted to do really since the beginning of the channel is produce boutique kits is what I'm going to call them. Basically, when I make a kit for my car, I'll pull a couple of extras and uh, sell them and not it'll be a limited run. Like I'm not going to make a bunch, but I'll sell a few, a few to the people that want them. Um, and I think it'll be a really cool way for you guys to get something uh, that I've created, but then also to keep it kind of spe special and rare. So I don't know if I'll do that on this. It depends on how smoothly the mold making goes. If I f pull the parts and they feel like quality parts that I would be willing to sell, uh, then we'll do that. But if not, then we'll just roll into that on the next build. So that is where we are going to stop this one. I'm really happy with the way this is looking. I, I put the hood on and just got so excited about just everything that's going on in the front. I definitely feel like this is the best design that I've come up with so far for any of my cars. I'm really proud of it, and um, and I can't wait to just continue to move forward. The front looks super rad now, and the back just looks narrow. So I'm excited to, to move backwards and get this thing really wide and awesome. Yeah, so in the next video, we are going to be uh, finishing everything, getting it ready to pull molds, and then if that goes really smooth and well, then we'll pull molds in that same video. Either way, we're gonna be making the molds next weekend and maybe pulling the parts too, depending on how quick that goes. I've never done it before, so uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take, um, but I think it's gonna be a really cool process to learn. I think it's gonna be really fun. And I'll take you guys through the whole thing and show you uh, all my mistakes. <laughs> I'm sure I'll make plenty. Um, this, my videos normally take pace, place over the course of about two days. So it's been four days since I filmed yesterday's video, if that makes sense. Uh, I am feeling much better, so if I know yesterday's video I probably sounded really rough. Um, I feel a lot better. I'm still kinda congested a little bit, but I'm okay. Um, so for any of you guys that may have been concerned, uh, I did look, I looked at the footage and I looked really like sad and awful. I was just sick, tired and sick, but I feel pretty good now. Um, so I'm assuming that there might be some comments saying, hope you get better. I feel better. So thank you. But yeah, this is where we're going to end this one. We're getting really close to a finished product. I just painted it black so you guys could kind of see like what it looks like. It, it's kind of helps your brain, I think, just kind of wrap around in my brain too, not just yours. Uh, but makes it kind of wrap around what's actually going on. I still haven't gotten the tires fixed. I'm gonna pull those off tonight and take them to the shop tomorrow. Hopefully they can fix them and seal them up. Man, I hope so. And yeah, we're just gonna keep on moving. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you next weekend on Bill.